Well, we're back again for some work on this cobweb covered uh, six wheel drive Land Rover Parenti ambulance or X ambulance at this point. We have orange lights, not red now. And it's been a good year for the spiders. They are covered on everything. Everything is covered with spider webs. It's first thing in the morning and I'm not quite awake. Now it's boggy, wet, and muddy at the moment, and we need to crawl under this. Apparently my clutch slave cylinder is leaking, so we have a brand new one here. And today we're gonna to change this over. We have pretty much everything we need except for a pair of needle nose pliers. That is important because there's a push rod that sits inside this dust jacket. Whilst they're not meant to, normally the push rods in these are detached from the forks in the clutch and they will fall into the bell housing if you're not careful. So we're going to need to get a pair of pliers. I have some brand new flange nuts or flange nut spanners that are hard to open one handed. We have uh, a set of these. I'm pretty sure the 11 mils what we need for these guys and that should fit on there nicely. Okay, so we've got a bunch of new gear um, and uh, because my uh, financial advisor is not going to be able to help me pump this today for various reasons, I have a one man brake bleeder kit. Basically this is just a little bottle with a uh, check valve on the top and some pipe and a little magnet so you can stick it onto things. This should help bleed the clutch much much more easily. Now, one of the reasons I like having a ground sheet like this, and by the way, this is just a cheap mover's blanket, um, is that uh, when you get out, you can just pull this sheet out and all your tools come with it. And if you drop anything, it's pretty easy to see where it's come from. So, um, I think we might get the, uh, the drain pan out as well, because I think that'll probably help us. Just in case we lose a bit of brake, brake fluid when we undo everything. Oh. All right, so one thing that happens since I've been diagnosed, since I, give me a minute to talk. I get wild head spins when I lay on my back now, especially under vehicles. I think it's a result of the brain lesions I suffered in the last attack of MS, but I can tell you now it's wildly unpleasant, leading to me not liking doing this. And I'm on the wrong side for the clutch slave. All right, this is our clutch slave cylinder. There's a nice little hard line, the little U-bend that goes up to the body. And from there, it goes to a flexible line so that there's uh, not a hard linkage between the engine and the chassis. Otherwise, that will vibrate to pieces. While I'm here, both the grease nipples for the winch shaft are exposed too, so they may get some grease. Um, I did actually use that the other day. Anyway, first thing we need to do is get this guy off and we've got our um, drain pan underneath. Now, are we in 11 mil? We are indeed. All right. We are going to undo this guy. Yep, and straight away we have some brake fluid leaking. Up. Could take a little bit. Three hours later. We might just let this go for a minute. All right, we are off. One of the reasons I wear glasses when I'm under here is because brake fluid splashes and it can actually make you go blind. Um, so I need to find some, uh, I'm gonna clean this off my hands before I do too much else. I don't wanna dissolve all my tools. All right, this next bit, we're gonna have a crack at it with ratchet spanners. See if we can find one that will fit nicely. Probably that one. Let's see if I can crack that, cool. Now, yeah, we'll probably want to get this top one done first, because it's the problematic one. Oh, the PTO shaft's going to be a problem. Might have to use a socket and an extension or something on that. Okay, the problem I've got, 
to get the extension sockets and everything like that, I'm going to have to climb on the roof and get my other toolbox out. And I don't want to. Anyway, um, let's crawl out and do that. Crawl back under, get more head spins, and then wait 10 minutes. All right. And I'm laying right under the PCV vent pipe here, so I'm going to get oil eventually. All right, there we go. That's the one we want. Now we need an extension bar. Probably one like you, but that's too big. And I dropped the socket. All right, give me a bit of my uh, yell and scream profanities. All right, so hopefully you guys can see where I'm coming from here. And um, hopefully we can get this nut out from here. We'll take this one all the way out. Oh, and that's really loose now. And uh, I don't know if I can get to it with my fingers. Just. Oh, I'm glad the exhaust's cool. Yeah, actually. Oh, I just realized that is loose. I'll need to fix that. There's a grub screw in there somewhere. So, note to self. Try not to use the winch if I don't have to. Yep, there we go. We're going to drop this in the drain pan. Nope. Out of that one. Now, this point's where we get our pliers. And we want to be fairly careful here. We're going to get under here very carefully. This is the bit I don't want to mess up. Okay, is that rod should come out fairly soon. Here's our rod. I'm lucky. Now that rod is retaining, that's good. All right, that is really good news. That's the biggest, most stressful part of the whole job. I was hoping that rod didn't fall in there. So, that were through the hardest part. Um, I am still definitely concerned about my winch drive shaft, but We'll figure that out later. All right. So, um, bleed flange goes up because it will fill up and the air bubble will be at the top. So let's push you in to this slot here. We are in like that. There we go. Now, I better make sure, actually, let's, let's be gentle here. I better make sure that there isn't a, uh, a seal that needs to go on the old one. Yes, there's a gasket that's got to go back on. All right, pull the rubber boot off the old one. Take the gasket here. We'll change our camera angle up so that you can see what we're doing a bit better. So there's a gasket that's got to go on. Um, bleed up. That guy can go in there. You can go in that hole. There we go. I hope I didn't lose some footage just then with the camera being at a funny angle. I'm kind of concentrating on getting this sorted. I want to get one of these guys just a finger tight so I can let go of it. Around. We won't do this up tight right away because we want to be able to locate that other bolt. Um, with a little bit of slack. We're going to use our extension socket to uh, try and locate that. Although I might have to get it stowed over my fingers. I think I will. <laughs> Easier said than done with this PTO shaft in the way. It's a tight space in here, so it's a bit difficult. That feels like we're in finger tight, and I can already feel a little bit of tension against the, uh, the clutch. So that means the push rod's in place and doing its thing. Now, I'm going to tighten this up. Not over tight because I'm pretty sure this is an aluminium bell housing. So we do it up enough that it won't rattle loose, but not so tight just to strip the thread. Um, same thing I learnt from Ford Falcon uh, brake cylinders years and years ago, helping a mate do his brakes. We stripped the thread out of it. That was not a day where I was popular. All right. So if we can bend this hard line back in. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll press that spanner. Uh, that'd be nice if I could put a ratchet spanner on this thing. It would make life really easy. Right. This is always the bit, because this bit is really springy. And we need to get a thread started. You know what, I might find an 11 mil open ender. I'm gonna hold a lot of tension on this. It's a bit of a dexterity challenge. Did I get the thread started? I don't wanna let go of this until I have. All right, get our flare nut back and uh, see if we can go up this way. Come on, you can go on. Many months later. I really hope I have not cross-threaded this. It would be a bad day if that's the case. All right, we've just reached the end of the thread. I'm not gonna over-tighten this one, but this does need to be slightly firm. We're gonna crack this guy open, which is our bleeder. We're gonna get our one-man brake bleeder kit. Okay, so I had to get out from under here and I went and attached the tube to the bleed nipple with a bit of heat and some stretching. That's what she said, eh? Anyway, um, which meant I had to get back under here, which meant I got more head spins and uh, another round of getting choked by my shirt. That should be okay. That should create at least enough it should prevent at least um, air getting back in. So uh, let's go top up the reservoir and uh, pump the clutch pedal. I'm not sure what the audio is going to be like at the moment because I just had to wash the uh, brake fluid off the GoPro. So the mic might be full of water. go pump the pedal now this is the bit where I'd love to have two cameras on the go but I'm lazy today wow that is I missed really having to stand on this clutch it's pumping a bit of fluid through now let's check our reservoir make sure we're not running empty yep that was our reservoir running empty so we're gonna be here for a bit all right, so I've discovered uh, four pedals is about the magic number before you want to top up the reservoir without getting air in it. While I'm pumping, I'm gonna chuck the GoPro down below here and record that reservoir. And oh, I have brake fluid pouring out down here. The line has come off. That is like super irritating. All right. All right, we're back out and we have a coating of brake fluid on everything that's probably going to dissolve plastics. I am too exhausted now to care. Um, with multiple sclerosis, this is about all I can do in a day. Um, to recap, um, I dragged my financial manager out of bed um, to uh, help bleed the clutch, just as my neighbor woke up too, so he came and helped. Anyway, I had help. Um, Lessons learned from this, that one man brake bleeder, the tube doesn't fit. I realize afterwards there's these little nipple things I probably could have jammed in that bleeder as well um, and made it work, but for now, we don't care. So we got it bled up, um, we've topped up the reservoir. I've dragged out my sheet full of tools and we check our free play, which is fairly normal free play for this clutch. So, how does it feel? We'll have a look in here. Oh, that feels smoother and more normal, although we've just... Yeah, actually, that's not going in as much. We've probably still got some air in the line by the feel of that. I'll have to bleed it a bit more. But I also have to go somewhere fairly shortly. That's frustrating when you drag somebody out of bed so yeah actually that's where my clutch is starting to take up there so I really need more clutch throw than that um, 
Now, I probably need to get under there and pull the wading plug out and drain out the remaining fluid. Um, I am tired. I think I'm going to do, well, in the situation, I mean, that's relatively easy. I should just get under and do that. All right, let's do the wading plug. Now, wading plug debate, um, also known as a fording plug. Um, generally speaking, you should leave these out um, unless you're ready to go across a river. Um, I leave mine in for a couple of reasons. Mainly because I want to know if anything's leaking and what is leaking. And this is how I came to determine that my clutch sleeve was leaking because brake fluid came out of here. And there is a bit of brake fluid with a little bit of engine oil in it there. Um, you can also tell when your main engine bearing is leaking and a bunch of other stuff like that. The problem is if you get a whole bucket load of oil in there, your clutch is not going to work. But if that happens, you've got far bigger problems. Um, I just like to change this regular, or check this and drain it regularly. It just gives me a better idea of what's going on with the thing. But um, yeah, there probably is some sense and reasonability in leaving it out. I just choose not to against better advice. And that is my personal choice. And you know, if that causes damage to the vehicle, that's, uh, I guess, the consequence of my choice. Now, put this back in. The other thing is I have MS and if I'm come to a river crossing, chances are I don't want to get out and put the fording plug in because it's probably going to knock the stuffing out of me. So let's get back topside. Um, I think we are going to have to bleed this a bit more. So uh, I'm going to get the financial manager back out again. All right, you ready to push down? All right, push in, lift up. Push in, lift up, push in, lift up, push in, lift up. All right. Oh, it's been, oh Christ. Oh, I wish I had a hoist could lift this thing. All right. Okay, I think we're done this time. Later. All right, so I just had to go and have a shower, get clean and rest and eat. I ended up uh, laying on the ground down here. Uh, my next treatment for MS is next week and it's, uh, it's really getting to me. And uh, I kind of overheated today too, even though it's not that hot. So uh, I think I'm about done, but the clutch is done. We'll take it for a test drive in a minute and uh, take it to the car wash to get some of the brake fluid off stuff. And here's the postie. I bet posties love delivering junk mail. But uh, anyway, so old slave cylinder out. We'll have a look at that in a bit. Um, I'll get to rest up a little bit more, then we're gonna go take this for a drive. And uh, yeah, and then we're gonna put the back together in this. Um, we're in the middle of washing everything so all the sheets and everything are off everything at the moment so uh anyway i'm feeling faint i'm gonna go lay down two hours later all right time to take off uh turn a few things on good all right time to take off see if that clutch works Clutch is feeling pretty good so far. Okay. Let's try a double clutch. So Dad, it's the oh. oh wow, the clutch on this is so much lighter. Oh. Oh. oh, that is so much better. I think that clutch slave has been damaged since uh, since we got it. So I'll probably try and do a. Uh, yeah, I'll pull the other one out and see if I can uh, do a bit of a tear down on it. Oh, this is almost as light to use the clutch as my 404 now. That is amazing. 
Oh, I'd used to take about 20, 25 kilos, maybe a little bit more to push the clutch in. Now it takes maybe three or four. And the change is much better. I'm not punching gears, so yeah, that, that slave cylinder definitely had problems. All right, let's get down to the car park, car wash, and get some brake fluid off things. This guy is only for shiny face. So all up, successful job. The clutch feels so much better. I didn't realize how bad it was till I did that. Um, yeah, probably an amateurish job. I'm no expert, but it's done. Um, I don't really knock the stuffing out of me. So uh, I think it's gonna be some rest time for the next few days till my next infusion. Um, I've got about a week of videos ahead, which you'll probably see behind this. So I'll probably be getting my infusion by about the time you see this. But anyway, um, time for us to uh, take off. Probably find ourselves a little bit of a bite to eat. We need some more diesel and uh, might go and let my apprentice have a muck around at a park somewhere.